in this uh, topic we will look into the connectivity within the molecule and the geometry of the molecule and later on the concept of hybridization and eventually the molecular orbital theory. If you categorize the bonds that are present, first of all meaning of bond would mean that it is give and take of electrons or sharing of electrons basically something involving electrons something involving electrons in case of ionic bonds it is the movement of electrons from one place to the other place giving rise to a full charge say one electron goes completely so it is plus one, full plus one charge. One electron comes in completely, minus one charge. So you deal with ions in such cases. And when you deal with ions, then it is the electrostatic interaction between two ions which keeps them together. Since you deal with full charge, it has to be a strong force. In case of covalent bond, it is not completely give and take type of case. It is rather sharing type of thing. And when we talk about metallic bonding, metallic bonding is something which uh, we won't really get into the depth of. But you know the idea that uh, you, you see in electricity, metal conducting electricity, it is free of electrons. We often call them free electrons because they can go out of the atoms and get themselves liberated. It's a sea of electrons and uh, also sea of ions. Because when electrons are out of the atom, atom would become ion. So it's a C type of thing in case of uh, metallic bonding. We would uh, concentrate on these two primarily. All electrons are not involved uh, when bonds are formed. There are inner electrons, there are outer electrons. Inner electrons have got too much, they are too much controlled by the nucleus, local nucleus. So generally we are interested in the outermost side electrons. The electrons that are involved in bonding are the ring electrons. So you need to look at outermost orbital or orbitals for them. To denote these electrons, valence electrons, we show them as dots around the symbol for the element. For example, in case of sodium, I may like to show one dot, just one dot.
inner electrons I may not consider necessary to show. You will see several examples here, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon and so on. When we use this type of uh, representation, then that is called Lewis symbol. Now why things react? Generally speaking, octet rule works, generally speaking. The desire to become like inert gas. In case of uh, hydrogen, in case of lithium, it could be the desire to become like helium. Now helium means two electrons, but still octet word is uh, uh, more pronounced because except helium, if you look at any other inert gas, it is all about 88888. So in the case of helium, octet word is not suitable. But uh, even in those cases where octet is uh, close, octet rule doesn't work. Octet rule does not work in all cases. Even I exclude those cases of uh, helium type, even otherwise octet rule does not work in all cases. You will always find some exceptions. Uh, in theories. So it is also not 100% accurate theory, octet rule theory, but mostly it works. So the desire for stability makes somebody reactive. Desire for stability makes somebody reactive. Or greater stability. Now, in this slide, uh, you should be seeing a reaction between sodium and chlorine. When sodium reacts with chlorine, sodium chloride is formed. Formation of sodium chloride. Now many things happen when this reaction is going on which we may not be aware of visibly. For example, inside chlorine Inside chlorine molecule, two chlorine atoms are there. Now chlorine atom has to bond with sodium. So chlorine-chlorine bond has to break. That must be happening, which is called atomization of the molecule of chlorine. Then after chlorine becomes atomic, sodium has to supply one electron. So sodium must lose one electron, then chlorine must gain one electron, 
and then you have uh, sodium cation and uh, chloride anion they should be attracted towards each other by coulombic uh, attractive force all these things we don't see happening but we are able to understand what we actually see is that it is a violent reaction and normally exothermic reaction would mean that final energy is uh, lower that means finally stability is more lower energy more stability and that also means NaCl is more stable and that's why they are reactive so NaCl is more stable and we try to understand it like this sodium would like to become like uh, inert gas having 8 electrons now it would like to become but don't think that losing electrons is that easy after all nucleus of sodium is pulling the electron but still sodium would not mind losing electron so much so sodium becomes Na plus then chlorine would gain electron so chlorine also has 7 it becomes 8 so both of them have got octet and that's how we are able to explain this and uh, and also not just octet then the electrostatic interaction between these two ions is also important in fact we will see the whole energy perspective and in that all these things are involved sodium losing electron actually requires energy so while it sounds so easy to understand that uh, sodium will, will lose electron why because to have octet root the fact is that loss of electron taking place in sodium requires energy it doesn't liberate energy but the overall reaction if you see overall reaction is exothermic it releases lot of energy it's violent so that is when you look at the system as a whole approach then you realize that the overall energy is reducing now once you have these ions sodium plus and chloride uh, you have their arrangement taking place they are not randomly placed they are actually very systematically placed and all this systematic placement happens naturally without anybody making an effort to lay them down at coordinates so that's the nature which is doing it they are very systematically placed Na plus and uh, Cl minus ion yes there may be some occasional defects here and there but otherwise it's a very systematic arrangement so when we have an arrangement of ions it doesn't look all right to call molecule where is the molecule Na plus surrounded by 6 Cl minus Cl minus surrounded by 6 Na plus there is no single particle so to say I mean uh, no unit of NaCl that you can pick and place there is no separate unit of Na and Cl one Na and one Cl that you can uh, pick and place so that is why NaCl is not technically called a molecule but we use NaCl and uh, that is the formula unit
Now, here is the arrangement. If you focus on any one location, say for example you focus on this location. Suppose you focus on this location, then on the right of it, front, back, left. Four balls you will find in the same plane, right, left, up, down. One ball is below and one ball will be up. So for any point, you are able to locate six balls around it. Whether that ball is of Na plus or that ball is of Cl minus, this pattern is repeated. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the whole system if you look at, then there is lowering of energy taking place. There may be individual cost of energy involved, but eventually there is relief that takes place. Cost, if we say, if you take electron out from sodium, then that's a cost. Endothermic is the cost. But overall, there is net release that takes place. Let's look at the total picture. Suppose we start with sodium which is going to be a piece, solid, powder, whatever, solid, basically solid. And chlorine which will be gas. You would need atoms. So sodium solid to sodium vapor and that would cost energy. Vapor means atom form. We are doing stages by stages. So there is a cost involved, energy cost. Then chlorine molecule to chlorine atom. Cost involved in breaking the bond. Till now it is cost. 
Now you pull one electron away from sodium and that involves cost. Nucleus of sodium will oppose that. And now chlorine has seven, chlorine gains one electron. It is attraction by the positive nucleus. So there is a release of energy. Now there is release. Cl to Cl minus. This is just Cl to Cl minus this part. And even up to this point there is a cost. We started from here. And we are here. Right? There is a cost till now. Lattice energy is very important. What is lattice energy? When ions interact positive and negative, then the energy release that takes place. That is very important and that's big. And because of that, you will see that the final energy is lower than the initial energy. Now coming to the definition of lattice energy, formal definition of lattice energy. The energy required to separate one mole of ions in an ion nick lattice into gaseous ions is called lattice energy. You can also talk in opposite language. in which case it would be released. Now to what factors uh, does it depend? If you look at electrostatics, then the potential energy is given by some constant times Q1 into Q2 divided by D, right? And therefore, if Q1 and Q2 are large, then this energy is large. And if D is less, then this energy is large. Q1 and Q2 are large. You know that uh, in case of several metals, charge could be plus 2, charge could be plus 3. Sodium chloride, of course, charge is plus 1 minus 1. But it is possible to have species with higher magnitude of charges. Then D, if you want D to be less, then it means it should be small fellows, ionic size. It is no longer atomic size, but it is ionic size. So one needs to have an idea of ionic size also.
If you look at uh, lattice energies of some compounds, sodium fluoride 788, look at lithium fluoride. In these examples, uh, charge is one only on the left side, charge is 1, 1, but look at the size. Lithium top position in first group metals, chlorine top position, halogens, small sizes, both of them in comparison to others. 1030. Then look at this side, cesium means big. So, less energy is required to break CSI, more energy is required to break LII. And if you look at second group, plus 2, now charge has increased here, so look at this. So, two factors, charge factor and the uh, distance vector and distance vector has to do with ionic radii of both cation and anion. You know from Hess's law that doesn't matter which route you follow, you can calculate heat of reaction following different routes. Here we are wanting to analyze lattice energy. The direct reaction if we see, then that's it. Na, chlorine, NaCl. That's the direct approach. Other approach is that you go step by step. As I was saying, you start with sodium solid, first you atomize or vaporize it, then chlorine molecule you break, get chlorine atoms, then you ionize sodium. Ionized sodium means uh, ionization energy is involved. Then you ionize chlorine, but here it is electron affinity release. And then at the end you look at the lattice energy. So whether you do it directly or you do it by a sequence of steps, doesn't matter. So, instead of doing a direct reaction and uh, doing the measurement, you use individual data, you know what is the ionization energy of sodium, you know what is the electron affinity of chlorine, you look at individual data and you add up all delta H, add up all delta H, delta H1 here, delta H2 there, delta H3 
will batch for you add all of them and then you calculate Now one, one clarification here, if the objective is to, if the objective is to find uh, ionization energy, if the objective is to find ionization energy, if that is a variable, then actually you need this number also. You need this number, minus 410.9 number you know, you need to know. Now what you would do is that, you know that number and then you say that this number will be the same if you follow this path. If you follow this path of uh, adding individual delta H is, individual delta H is if you add, then even then the final answer would be the same. That is what you would say. And then, And then you would say that I want lattice energy. So you would say that let this number be, let's say delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, delta H4. And let lattice energy, which is the unknown, be x. Okay? And then you would say the sum of all of them is still going to be minus 410.9. So you would say delta H1 plus uh, delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4 plus X is equal to minus Right, sum of all of them will be minus 410.9. So x will be this. You already know delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, delta H4. And so you are able to find x. Yes, X here is the lattice energy. X here is the lattice energy, which is what we are wanting to get. Any questions, let me know.
we are still doing theory no assignment for today we stop now